Hello, freak bitches. Then they had a weird line. Studio 54 had a huge line. But you got picked. Studio 54, the yeah, dance like club? Yeah, when Studio 54 was on fire, you showed up, and you didn't guarantee to get in. You got picked. Right, the way they do now in Hollywood, like they pick hot chicks. Right, so they pick hot chicks. What was the thing we were talking about when they, they won't let a guy in without a chick? Something, yeah. There's some formula to go out in clubs and. Yeah, they, would, they never would let guys in without chicks. So if you walk into a club with three guys that don't want you, they want the chicks in there first. Yeah, well, the, the last thing you want is a sausage fest. Look at all those dudes trying to get in. Look at Stuart, look at this. That was inside, but outside there'd be God. a line of people. Oh, that could be it. No, that's outside. That's what outside. am I thinking? That's outside. That's oh outside. Oh, my God, what a zoo. And just you, to try to get in. Just to try to get in. What was the big deal about Studio 54? You could snort coke, dance, get your <laughs> dick sucked, and get your shoe shined all at the same place and be home by six. <laughs> it was a very, you know, I mean, everybody went there. Like this. Who is that? Andy Warhol? That's Andy Warhol. But Who's the girl? Look at her. She's got a beer bottle in her mouth. You know, Champagne. Oh, champagne, yeah. Pretty hot. Black Sabbath. Fucking Black Sabbath, the wow. Studio 54. Look wow. at Mick Jagger's wife dancing with... Uh, Andy Warhol. Look at Liza Minnelli behind them. Wow. So it was just like the place to be. It was the place to be. You could go crazy. You How know. strange. Even, strange times, huh? But here's the beauty of it. They have a station on Sirius, and it's called Studio 54. You could just put it on on Sunday nights. They do a podcast, and what they do is they interview people that actually used to go there or work there. And I got to tell you something, Joe. They had a dentist on about a year ago and his wife that it was crazy listening to this interview about what their life was. They were professional. Dentists making money in New York. They stayed out till 5, 6 every night. Wow. Went home, took the kids to school, went back home, took a nap till 1, got up, went to the dental office, worked till 5, Went home, took another nap, fed the kids, and at 9 o'clock they'd fucking bring the kids downstairs to their moms and they'd do it all over again. <sighs> Five nights a week, over and over. And the lady was saying, not till years later, Liza Minnelli thought I was a publicist. She goes, she didn't know I was a dentist. They just saw you in there every night. It was all trust funders, you know. That's all the people who could do that type of shit. Wow. Do blow till all hours of the night. You could put it out. They even had an interview about when Bob Hope went to Studio 54. Bob Hope? Bob Hope walked into the studio not knowing what the fuck he was going to, what lair he was going to walk into. He went out to the middle of the floor and started dancing, and these chicks got together and started tying Bob Hope up. <laughs> just tying him around like an Indian. He's just standing there like laughing Bob Hope style. Then he's like, is, is this a fucking joke? They just left him there. <laughs> like they just tied him up and left him there. Tons of stories out of there like that, you know, like just. But then it moved on. But you got picked to go in there. How did it move on? Like, imagine how weird it must have been when it finally the door shut and that was it. The people where it was their whole life for years. Well, people move on. You know, clubs yeah. get hot. Different clubs. I went there one time in 1983, maybe 84. It was done. My friend it was got already me. done. It was, yeah, it was done. It was just a bunch of assholes trying to be cool. Wow. And I found a $100 bill. I was out of money with a bag of blow, no cash, not a dime in my pocket. And I looked down at 4 in the morning, it was a $100 bill, and that's how I got saved. That's how I got home. Wow. And that was it. That's my Studio 54 story. It is weird, those cl the, the nightclub scene. The nightclub scene is a very strange scene. You know, one club gets hot. And then it dies off, and the people that are in that business like try to figure out what makes something hot and what doesn't. You got to rename places and redo them, and reopening and grand reopening, and get people to show up. Like I remember hearing that they were paying Paris Hilton like shit piles of money to just show up at clubs. That's it. The Kardashians, any any of those people, they pay a shitload of money. You're there. They take pictures, and uh -huh. your club gets hot. Now, after about a year, you start taking partners in. Yeah? Sure, because you know it's on the way down. The odds uh -huh. are against you. So after a year, some guy comes in, I love your place. And you uh -huh. go ahead, I'll take half. Give me half. And that's how you get out of it. Or you do what a lot of people did, and they just light the place on fire and start from scratch. <laughs> a little Jewish lightning, and the place starts from scratch. You know, I knew the guy that owned the gay clubs in Houston. Like in the 70s, and he was telling me one time, he goes, yeah, once we got our use out of them, you light them on fire. 
collect the insurance, Jesus and then open Christ. up another club. That's it. Jewish Lightning. Jesus Christ. It's a weird scene. You know, I mean, people that just look forward to just going out and just drinking and dancing and snorting coke every night, just looking for, like, experience, just something different and wild that takes them out of their everyday grind and just do it over and over and over Over again. and over and over. And different, like, when I was growing up, it was Club Aria. It was big. And the rooftop, you paid, like, 24 bucks to go in at 11 o'clock, and you drank all night till 7 in the morning. Mm. 24 bucks, all you could drink. It's shit booze. I mean, you're not drinking Kovacic and shit. Right. But when you're doing blow, you're just burning that shit anyway. You come out, they give you some sunglasses, and that's it. If you went in after three, it was, it was like twenty something after eleven, and then like seventeen bucks all you could drink after three, till seven in the fucking morning, and people were packed. That's what New York was about back then. It was just people staying out till seven, six. New York is what, a 4 a.m. last call? When's the last call in New York? I, th- I have no idea. Florida, I think it's even later than New York. Florida, Florida closes for one hour. Five o'clock in the morning. So let's say you're at the news cafe. Right. And we're bullshitting and we're having a good time. At five o'clock, they'll come over to you and say, hey, do me a favor. By five o'clock, the bar's going to close. So you can't order beer till six. So we just order 25 beers. <laughs> And you wait till the bar opens at six, and now you're fucking ready to drink again. I they closed for one hour. One hour. This was back, you know, 20 years ago, 15 years ago in what Coconut a, Grove. What a weird rule. One hour. Remember that place we used to go to? Right down the street from that improv? Yeah, the News Cafe, yeah. right? That yeah. was a great place. It's a great place. Great breakfast, great fucking bar. That club went downhill hard, though. Yeah, that club. And that place, well, the whole Coconut Grove area. Became the only thing that's still open are the Doolin Pianos, the pizza joint, that mall. The Doolin Piano place is still, still open? open. Yeah, it's in that little mall there with the movie theater. They always have those right next to improvs. Like they have one in Addison too, right? Addison. They have one up next to John Lovitz up in Universal. They do? Yeah, they used to. If there's a fucking. Uh, what are you pulling up there? Miami has a 24 hour. Really? Drinking now. Oh, just Miami? Just in the Miami Entertainment District, it says. Oh, well, that makes sense. It's 4 a.m. Broward County and Key West. Yeah. But a little different everywhere else in Orlando. Or West Florida. Palm is where we always worked. 